Hello and welcome back everyone. Pulp calcification is the process in which there is hard tissue formation seen inside the pulpal space. These instances of pulp calcification are rare but they do occur and you will most likely encounter them in your dental practice so it is important to know about them. Causes of pulp calcification can vary. Some literature suggests that they may occur as a result of some sort of irritation such as dental caries which causes pulpal inflammation and therefore sometimes pulp calcification can also be a consequence of pulpal inflammation. Calcification can also occur as a result of trauma, maybe some sort of mechanical injury or they may even occur naturally in some individuals as a natural process of aging. There are two basic forms of pulp calcifications, pulpal stones also known as denticles and diffuse calcifications. There is yet another form of calcification which I will discuss later on in this video because it requires separate attention. Now the pulpal stones are like small stones usually found in the chamber of the pulp. Although they are not common in the canals, if present they are usually attached or embedded in the canal wall in the apical region. They can either be attached or embedded in the dentinal walls or they can be unattached. Although pulpal stones don't block the orifice of the canals, they do make the process of finding an orifice a lot harder. And if they are too large, pulpal stones usually get removed during excess preparations. One important thing to remember is that pulpal stone can be seen on radiographs, which helps for confirming their presence. Diffuse calcifications, on the other hand, are usually found in canals and less often present in the chamber. And unlike pulpal stones, which are visible on the radiographs, diffuse calcifications are only visible histologically on a histological slide. And they are not visible on radiographs because they are not concentric masses of calcified tissues like the pulpal stones are. And hence this account for absence of radiographic findings of diffuse calcification, which indeed makes their detection a bit harder. Now there is also another type of calcification known as the calcific metamorphosis in which there is an extensive formation of hard tissues on the dentinal walls beside the pulpal space which is often a response to irritation or death and replacement of the odontoblastic cells. Hence the most common cause of calcific metamorphosis is trauma due to accidental injury especially in young individuals. In calcific metamorphosis, there is a reduction in coronal space followed by a gradual narrowing of the canals on the radiograph which is also the first sign of calcific metamorphosis. As the irritation increases, the amount of calcification may also increase, eventually causing the pulp chamber and the canals to be filled with heart tissue leading to a complete or partial radiographic obliteration of the pulp chamber and its canals. only until a small strand of pulp tissue remains. This causes a yellowish discoloration of crown as a manifestation of calcific metamorphosis which is a very important clinical sign used to diagnose the calcific metamorphosis. There is also a reduced response for vitality testing of the tooth as well. Now all of these pulp stones, diffuse calcification and calcific metamorphosis are not pathological in nature and hence the tooth that has these calcification do not require any special treatment. Now some authors however suggest a treatment for a tooth that has undergone or is undergoing calcific metamorphosis. Even though late development of pulpal infection and necrosis in such tooth have been reported, many literature suggests the development of pulpal infection is less common as compared to the endontic complications that would be necessary to treat that tooth with calcific metamorphosis. The evidence also suggests that pulpal infection percentage in teeth that have undergone calcific metamorphosis is quite low. Hence, many doctors argue that endodontic treatment in favor of an obliterating root canal is not a justification for early endodontic treatment and not to mention treating a tooth with calcific metamorphosis is a huge challenge for even the most experienced of the dentist. However, treatment for a discolored crown due to calcific metamorphosis should be made possible with the help of bleaching techniques or with the help of partial coverage if necessary. So just to conclude this small story on calcific metamorphosis, treatment of a tooth with calcific metamorphosis is quite difficult and early endodontic therapy as a justification of preventing an endodontic infection that may happen in the future is not alone a satisfactory reason for performing an early endodontic therapy on a tooth with calcific metamorphosis. But the treatment for discoloration of crown caused by calcific metamorphosis should be considered and treated appropriately. 
Now let's look into a basic question in order to understand the topic even better. A 12 year old female patient came into your OPD with a discolored 1 2. 1 2 in FDI means that it is the upper right lateral incisor. Upon questioning the patient, you find out that there seems to be no significant cause of the problem. After sitting the patient on the dental chair, you begin their dental examination. During the examination, you find out that the 1 2 tooth has a yellowish tint to it. Upon further questioning the patient and her parents about any kind of accidental history, you find out that the patient had an accident approximately 9 to 10 months back, where she fell face first to the ground. No major injuries happened in that accident. Out of curiosity, you order a peripical x-ray. In the x-ray, you see that the chamber is unusually smaller than it should be at this age for a young patient. Given all the information provided, what will be your most possible diagnosis? A. Pulpal necrosis B. Calcific metamorphosis C. Diffuse calcification or D. Amalgam discoloration So you have 5 seconds to read the question once again and then I will try to explain you the answer. So let's just start by disregarding the most obvious wrong answer that is amalgam discoloration. Even though amalgam discoloration does happen, firstly there isn't any information provided about a history of amalgam filling. And secondly, amalgam is never used in interior because of many reasons such as inferior aesthetics, issues with mechanical retention. So the D option is automatically incorrect. Now, even though pulpal necrosis is always a possibility, especially if a patient has presented with a history of trauma, which is common in young children, but there are a number of reasons why this may not be the case over here. Firstly, there isn't any history of pain associated with that tooth. That is not to say that every time the patient will give you a history of pain with a pulpal necrosis case, sometimes the patient may not give a history of any sort of pain. So the absence of a pain history alone is not a decisive factor to rule out pulpal necrosis. Now another important feature is that when a tooth has discolored because of pulpal necrosis, the crown usually has a grey stain to it, owing to the fact that pulp has now been dead, but over here the crown is having a yellow stain. So based on just the information provided, we can safely say that pulpal necrosis is the least likely among the rest of the options that are left. Now in clinical situations, in order to rule out pulpal necrosis entirely, it is advised to do a pulp vitality test, as that will help you to confirm your diagnosis even further. So moving on from the radiographic finding that is given to us, we can safely say that it is a type of calcification since the chamber appears to be smaller than normal, especially for a younger patient. Now diffuse calcification is a process which is not visible on radiographs. It is only visible histologically. So you cannot tell by looking at a radiograph that a tooth is undergoing diffuse calcification. Adding to this, diffuse calcification has not been known to be associated with yellowish discoloration of the crown. On the contrary, calcific metamorphosis has been known to occur after a trauma to a tooth. It has also been known to cause yellowish discoloration of a crown. And finally, the first radiographic finding that suggests a calcific metamorphosis is the narrowing of the pulp chamber and the canals. So putting all the information together, we can safely say that evidence for calcific metamorphosis outweighs diffuse calcification. Hence, in this case, the correct answer would be B, calcific metamorphosis. While putting together differential diagnosis, we always need to put together all the evidence that we have been presented with, and never can just one evidence disregard the disease entirely. That is the reason why I gave a little bit longer history. In clinical situations as well, we need to collect as much information as possible. This includes detailed history taking, examinations, radiographs, and then think based on the evidence which disease can be the most likely out of all the options that are presented to us. And every little detail is important in narrowing down the diagnosis, just like in this case. So that's all for today in this lecture. I'll meet you people next time. Till then, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.